You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. So I want to talk about the Chicago Bears. Um, 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 um. The heck you guys doing, man? So, so yesterday I kind of went on a bit of a diatribe about the Packers, and it's it was negative, but from the standpoint of this is just, it, it's really just a different way of doing things, I guess. And it's an extremely high-risk way of doing things. In fact, it's, it's, I shouldn't even say it that way. The high risk has already been done. These are the consequences of going high risk, right? People are complaining to me, we haven't done anything in free agency. Correct, we have no money. All the pushing the money out, kicking the can down the road, right? But it's, but it's common. I mean, this is just what, in fact, I would say most teams do this. The Packers are one of the few that don't. And, and the only reason I, I get upset is the Packers not doing this kind of stuff is the reason they've been able to have such sustained success. I know, well, Rodgers too. Okay, fair. But when Rodgers is sucking up 20% of the cap, which is fairly unprecedented, and now we're starting to pay a lot of money to guys and kicking can down the road, and we lose guys like Corey Lindsley, and, you know, it just, it just, it, it makes me nervous. But with the Bears, I can't even tell you what they're doing. I don't know what this strategy would be called. I, I, I can't, I can't say nobody's ever done it. I'm sure there's been all kinds of stupid that's happened throughout the course of history in the NFL. But I cannot wrap my head around what that organization is doing. What is the big picture plan here? At at its core, my philosophy for the Chicago Bears, because again, this is part of what I like about the NFL, about being a football fan, aside from just rooting for the Packers, I think it's fun to kind of look at a situation and say, what do we do here, right? It's sort sort of similar to mock drafts in general, where you just look at a team and say, who would I draft, given the, you know, the talent level of the players available, given the needs of the team, the tendencies of the team, what do you, what do you think makes the most sense here? But in this case, it's just sort of a big picture look at how much money do we have what is what is the talent level of the team and what do we do to get to the Super Bowl? How do we do it? What is the path? I think it's a lot of fun, you know, pretending to be the GM outside of just the draft, but in general for the team. And I think for the Chicago Bears, as I've been saying now for several years, they they went all in, they missed. Um, I can't get mad that in, in 2019 they didn't just give up, right? I mean, obviously you're going to sort of trend downward, but that would be a good opportunity to to – you know, see if we can get a Foles and push all in and, you know, just just really try to hang in there. At this point in time, it is beyond obvious to me that it's time to call it quits. And if I'm the the at the ownership level for the Chicago Bears, we have bigger issues than just talent and age and contracts expiring and talent level decreasing and losing Fangio and then losing... um Pagano and and now being on the third defensive coordinator in three years, it really kind of starts with the fact that this team really does not like or respect Ryan Pace. They don't. Um, Again, I've mentioned it several times. You had Kyle Long, who is a right guard, very, very talented offensive lineman, retire. And when asked about would he return, he essentially said yes, but not for the Bears. With Allen Robinson, you have other Bears football players because they, they're all they're friends, right? I mean, I guess not everybody has to be a friend, but they look out for each other. They care about each other. And Allen Robinson is a very talented wide receiver that is not being adequately paid. He's saying he wants to get paid. The players are saying that he's getting raked over the coals, that, that the Bears are not doing right by him. And so you have your own players tweeting out essentially against the Bears saying, pay Robinson. And that's, that's relatively minor, but you're starting to see this rift on top of not having respect for the head coach and just the general direction of the team and the way things are handled and the fact that you're losing all the time. 
it could really just be as simple as you have a good GM and a head coach, but you've lost so much that you've lost the respect of the locker room, and we just need a fresh start. Because you're not going to win anything if you don't have buy-in. On top of the players really just not wanting to be here, one of the more critical things that's a completely underrated component is the offensive line. And we went from an offensive line that really in, in 2018 was one of the better offensive lines in football. And I've gone over it. Statistically, it was one of the best offensive lines. in. I think it was better than the Green Bay Packers. It was second or third in the NFL. Charles Leno, Cody Whitehair at the, the, uh, the peak, Kyle Long at right guard, Bobby Massey at right tackle. Yeah, 2018, they ranked second in pass blocking efficiency behind the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2018. And again, this is when James Daniels and Cody Whitehair were at the peak of their 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 play. Cody Whitehair didn't allow a single sack or hit all year. Um, James Daniels didn't allow a single sack all year. Kyle Long did allow a few, but very few pressures. 81 overall pass blocking grade, very good football player. Bobby Massey did allow several pressures, but only one sack on the season. I mean, just in general, the team was just a wall. They did a great job, at least as far as pass blocking. We've seen that erode over time. Now Bobby Massey's gone. Kyle, Kyle Long is gone. Charles Leno is sort of the... Charles Leno, James Daniels, and Cody Whitehair are the last ones left. James Daniels and Cody Whitehair have not been performing very well. And Charles, Leno's is, Charles Leno is 30 years old and in the final year of his contract in 2021. And again, that's just the offensive line. You had a quarterback that was so... I probably should wait as, as to make this the piece de resistance, but let's let's go to the quarterback. You had a quarterback battle between Nick Foles, who won a Super Bowl, and Mitchell Trubisky, who signed a and, and, and this is this is unbelievable to me, a one year two point five million dollar contract. I I don't there are no words for that, no words at I I can't fathom that. I mean, you, you've got backup running backs that are signing for more than that. Jamal Williams got a two-year contract for $7.5 million. He's a backup running back in Detroit. You know who else got a one-year $2.5 million deal? There, there's, there's two ex-Green Bay Packers, Tim Boyle and Montrevious Adams, got one-year $2.5 million deals. This is who their starter was. And understand, if he's worth more than that, he would have gotten more than that. The rest of the NFL, not named the Chicago Bears, are looking at Mitch Trubisky and they're saying this is a guy worth $2.5 million, and the Bears are struggling to figure out who to start over him. They can't find better than that. Poverty franchise. I'm not making this up, man. This isn't me just spitting out nonsense. This is a reality. This is your starter. The rest of the NFL has that little respect for your starting quarterback, for the guy that you traded up to draft in the same draft that we saw Deshaun Watson and Pat Mahomes go. Several picks later, you traded up for this guy worth $2.5 million contract. The guy couldn't, I mean, man, backup quarterbacks are getting $10 million bucks. Easy, easy. In fact, that's what Dalton got, although he's apparently not a backup, which is a whole other thing to talk about. But Ryan Fitzpatrick, 39 years old, he's going to go to Washington for $10 bucks. Jacoby Brissett is being picked up by Miami after losing Ryan Fitzpatrick. Jacoby Brissett is going to be a backup to Tua Tungavailoa. We've seen Jacoby. He's not a good football player. He's 29 years old. He's getting $5 million. bucks. Mitchell Trubisky was a, what, number two overall pick, is only 27 years old and got $2.5 million, and the Bears used him as a starter, and they couldn't find anyone better. And this is what the rest of the league thinks of Mitch Trubisky. But let's talk about Andy Dalton. Apparently, because, and not that there was ever a good scenario here, but the, the scenario that was building itself out was that Andy Dalton and Nick Foles would have a quarterback battle. And that ideally for the Bears, it's at least a slightly better battle than Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles. And yeah, maybe Dalton wins in the end. I don't really know. I mean, Dalton was pretty putridly horrible in Dallas. Technically graded out better than Nick Foles, but they were about, you know, neck and neck there. If we look at 2020 grades, just to kind of, I don't know, get an idea where everybody was at, Andy Dalton was 24th out of 42, Nick Foles was 30th, and Mitch Trubisky was 36th. Aaron Rodgers was first, I'm just saying. Oh, and by, by the way, Deshaun Watson was second, so and Russell Wilson was sixth. So you can see why Andy Dalton is uh, the best candidate here. 
But the thought is there's going to be some kind of a competition between fairly cheap quarterbacks. I mean, $10 million in the realm of quarterbacks is nothing. So we'll find the right guy and kind of try to make this thing work with whatever garbage we have. Well, it comes out yesterday. Somebody asked Dalton, hey, do you think you're going to be a starter here or what's what's the thought process? And he said, uh, well, yes, I am the starter, actually. The Chicago Bears told me that I was the starter. In fact, that was the only reason I signed and came over here is that they assured me that I would be the starter for the Chicago Bears. The guy wants to be a starter. So, yeah, 10 million bucks isn't great, but he, he doesn't want to be a backup. He's been a starting quarterback in the NFL for years. It's an insult. So when the Bears call him up, they're like, you are the starter for the Chicago Bears. He's like, heck yeah, dude, sign me up. I'm going to prove to everybody I still got it, blah, 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 blah. And Nick Foles is sitting at home looking at his phone going, what are you talking about? What is this nonsense? You're giving him the starter job? He hasn't even been in the set foot in the building yet. Again, this whole thing is a catastrophe. Did they not think that through? At this point, you have to trade Foles. I, I guess you don't have to, but you, I mean, he's, he's just, he's your backup. And then if you start Foles over, over Dalton, you flat out lied to the guy. Nobody is ever going to sign with you ever again. You told Dalton he's going to be the starter and you bench him for Foles? You lying bunch of jerks? You can't do that. As if players and agents and everything don't talk. Andy Dalton, is, you know, you can laugh at him all you want. He's been in the league a long time. He's a respected guy. You treat him like that and throw him on the bench after you promised him he'd get the starter job? He turned down other offers to come to you because you promised him he'd get the starting job? He probably turned down more money. He wants to be a starter. He wants to prove he can still do it. So Dalton won the job. Great. What about Foles? Because unfortunately, the way his contract is structured, you're going to lose money if you get rid of him. It's cheaper to keep him than to trade him. Well, I guess if you trade him, you save a, a million dollars. If you and, and there's, of course, the post-June 1 and all that kind of nonsense. But uh, according to this, if you trade him, he costs... Right now, six point six 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 million dollars, which just I mean that go figure, right? Seems about right for for the way things are going, Chicago. Maybe you don't want him sitting on your roster with a six 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 cap hit. Just a thought. I don't know who came up with that number. What are you doing? Anyways, the dead cap hit if you trade him is five point three 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 four. Meaning you save $1.3 million if you trade him. So you don't even get anything for it. And you got to coax somebody into taking foals for, you know, for 4 million bucks or whatever, which honestly shouldn't even be that hard. It's a decent amount of money for a decent quality backup. But then who do you have at quarterback? Mitch is gone. Foles is gone. It's Dalton and nobody. So I don't think you can get rid of them unless there's more in the world. But why? What? 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 They can't get rid of Foles. They can't. Well, they could draft somebody. It's never a guarantee. And the last thing you want is to be forced into a situation where you have to draft a quarterback to be a backup. Like we're drafting a fifth round quarterback in the third round just because we're freaking out. Because if Dalton goes down, we got to have, uh, gee, I don't know, Tariq Cohen come out and throw passes. We've just talked about offensive line and quarterback so far. We're not done. And again, remember the whole backdrop of this whole thing is what are they doing? Let's, let's pause here for a second. Again, I'm, I'm looking at this mess. The quarterback situation is a mess. The offensive line situation is a mess. The defense is declining. It's also getting older every single year. The talent level is slowly starting to decline and fall off or losing guys. You've got, you know, guys that are leaving or will be leaving soon. The The safety room is is decimated. The, you know, all, all these things. It's time to tear down and rebuild. It is, in my opinion. But, but, you may remember, I talked about this right before they tagged Allen Robinson, or, or right after they tagged Allen Robinson is when I talked about it, but I talked to Foz Sports, the Chicago Bears YouTuber, and he said there's no way that they don't tag Allen Robinson. And the exchange that we had is I talked to him and I said, yeah, I, I said the same thing about Galladay, and look at this situation. And he said, yeah, but the Lions are rebuilding. The Bears are not. And that's when it clicked. You're right. The Bears brought back pace. They brought back Nagy. They're not rebuilding. They're going all they're they're continuing their all-in push. That was the decision they made at that moment when they decided to keep these guys. You're not going to keep the same GM and coach and say, I, you have my blessing to tear this down and rebuild it again. 
You have to be saying, I like the direction we're going. Please keep it up. I trust that that if you continue, your vision will be there soon, which is beyond insane. But that's the decision they made. And sure enough, they tagged Allen Robinson and we were off and running, right? Okay, fine. So that's the direction. They're not going to tear down. They're going to keep going all in. So we've got Allen Robinson, who's recently just signed his tag. So he's staying great. We've got Andy Dalton. That's stupid, but okay. This is we're we're trying as hard as we can to continue the, what we're doing with Andy Dalton. Then they cut Kyle Fuller. Now I know for a fact, and if I was a little bit more up on getting the transcripts for this, actually, you know what? Let me just try. I don't think it's I transcribed that episode, but I know I've talked about Kyle Fuller is a cut candidate. Twenty nine years old. He's not that great. He's the biggest cap hit on this entire team right now at $20 million, which is stupid to pay a guy like Kyle Fuller, and they save 11 by getting rid of him. It seems crazy, and if, but if you're, if you're going to tear down and rebuild the team, which they need to, he needs to go. But they're not tearing down, but they're still going to get rid of Kyle Fuller, so they do that. Then you have safety Eddie Jackson clearly upset by that decision. He goes on to Twitter, he puts some kind of like slap in my head emoji, and then he deletes it, but it's, you know, obviously everybody saw it and everybody knows. This actually happened in Detroit. In Detroit, they got rid of Darius Slay and that they had a safety that had the exact same reaction. These guys are a bunch of idiots. That safety then got traded. Not saying they're going to trade A.D. Jackson. I really doubt it. They paid him a bunch of money. He's one of the few talented guys left. Overrated, but talented. I'm just saying, we've seen this play out before. By the way, if I can um, kind of blend this in a little bit to what I talked about yesterday with the salary cap and the Packers, let me just read what this little snippet here about Kyle Fuller. It says, the move is why, quote, the salary cap is a myth, unquote, is misleading. The Bears didn't want to release their top corner, but they are in cap hell and need the space to sign Andy Dalton, which, oh my goodness, not only does that help push, you know, kind of reinforce what I said yesterday about why this makes me nervous, but that is the most gut-wrenching sentence I've ever heard in my life. They needed to release their number one cornerback in order to have enough cap space to sign Andy Dalton, that makes me ill. That makes me sick to my stomach. And we're talking about the Bears, and I still can't help but feel sick reading that sentence. Oh, you remember from The Office when Gabe had that movie that he made and the genre was the cinema of the unsettling? You can make an... an, If you made a movie about the Chicago Bears this offseason, the category would be the cinema of the unsettling. And that sentence would be the, you know, the, it would be like a sentence that is repeated on a loop, like on a record, you know, it's skipping and it just keeps saying that. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not a producer, although I've got some movie ideas, you know, I'm just saying if any, if anybody out there is a producer, hit me up, man, we, we, we can do this and this can be, <laughs> this can be our, our first, our first, you know, dive into it because nobody watches this garbage. So it'd be, it'd be good practice. Oh boy. Let me let me read that one more one more time because it's it, it, as much as it makes me sick, it, I can't help but smile a little bit. The move is why the cap myth the cap is a myth is misleading. The Bears didn't want to release their top corner, but they are in cap hell and need the space to sign Andy Dalton. Wow. On top of all that, they're looking to trade Anthony Miller. Anthony Miller is not a great wide receiver. He's been a massive disappointment, which kind of is right in line with everything we know about the Bears. The Bears do something. Bears fans try their best to get excited and rally behind someone. They they get mad when you say anything about Anthony Miller. How dare you? He's going to be good. Did, did you see that one catch that one time? You got you stupid Packer fans are so dumb. You don't know Anthony Miller's going to blah, 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 blah. He's garbage. And now Bears fans hate him, and they're not even mad that they're trying to get rid of Anthony Miller. But he's still the number three wide receiver. Basically, those are the only three wide receivers last year. Javon Wims had 12 targets. Ted Ginn had five. Riley Ridley had four. DeAndre Carter had two. They're looking to trade Anthony Miller, and I don't think there's going to be a very big market for the guy because, again, not a good football player. But they're still trying to get rid of the guy. Remember, this is a team that has no money. They've had no draft picks recently, so they don't have a lot of guys waiting in the wings to fill these spots because they've been giving all their draft picks away, mostly for Khalil Mack, a little bit for Trubisky, puke. Sorry, did I just blurt that out? Sometimes I just blurt out the word puke. Happens usually when I'm talking about the Bears. I apologize. Tell your children I'm sorry. Inappropriate. Anyways, it gets better. This team that is not rebuilding, right? They're not rebuilding. No, no, no. We're going all in. Minus Anthony Miller. Minus Kyle Fuller. Minus Bobby Massey. 
minus Roy Robertson Harris, minus whatever, Buster Screen, I guess. I don't know. Which shouldn't be a big deal, but the fact that Kyle Fuller's gone, now it's like, okay, well, <laughs> that's your number one and your number three corners, but all right. By the way, Kyle Fuller's grade was a 64 overall and was by far the best cornerback on this team. Duke Shelley was the second highest graded at 56 overall. So there you go. There's your Bears cornerbacks. But again, continuing on, this is the team that's going all in. The only all in thing they've done is brought back Ryan Pace and Allen Robinson. Everything else is not all in. It's gutting the team. It's almost as if Ryan Pace convinced the ownership to keep him on because they're going to stay the course and is secretly, secretly trying to gut this team and rebuild it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But it's not done, though. Apparently, they're allowing Akeem Hicks to leave. Akeem Hicks has now come to the team and said, I don't want to be here anymore. Remember how we talked about everybody hates being a Chicago Bear? Akeem Hicks wants out, and the Bears are like, fine, get out. Akeem Hicks! Let's, let's again, let's look at this team. What do they have on this team by way of talent? Allen Robinson, right? Um, no other wide receivers. I'm not giving you Darnell Mooney. Cole Komet has proven nothing at tight end. Jimmy Graham is still there, which is hilarious, and he's not good. Um, Andy Dalton is not good. David Montgomery is decent. Cody Whitehair is decent. Charles Leno is decent. Although Co- Cody Whitehair had a 46 overall pass blocking grade, so I don't think I can give you decent. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to take that back. So you have Charles Leno, and that's it. And, and again, that's decent. I'm, I'm, I'm being generous by including... Charles Leno. He's in no way a top-tier talent. You have Khalil Mack. Um, we're not including Akeem Hicks. You have Eddie Goldman. I'm sorry I'm not giving you Roquan. I guess I could if you really want me to. I mean, he's solid in coverage, but he's just like all these other guys. Horrific run defender. He's really fast. He's a good pass rusher. He had 14 pressures, 5 sacks. He's got an 84 overall coverage grade. People love how he can run really, really quick. He had a 39 run defense grade. I just, I can't get behind linebackers that suck at stopping the run. I can't. Well, Danny Trevathan's our run defender, dummy. He had a 45. Danny Trevathan was terrible. He's got a 46 coverage grade and a 45 run defense grade. What are you talking about? Get out of my face. Listen, I I, I hope if you've been listening long enough, you know I'm going to give you credit where it's due. And I have given the Bears credit where it's due. I have nothing to give you right now. Khalil Mack is a dominant force who's stuck on a team in which he has no help whatsoever. If Akeem Hicks leaves, I don't know what to say. Not that Akeem Hicks is still the same force that he was. Again, he was overrated. I mean, he was a dominant force in 2018. Outside of that, he's been good, not great. But still, he's a massive part of that defense. It's the same with Kyle Fuller. I, it, both things can be true. He's overrated, but also your team is doomed without him. And so again, I, I just, I don't understand the path. Are we, are we going all in or are we tearing down and rebuilding? Because bringing back your GM and tagging Allen Robinson and bringing back your head coach signals that you're continuing the course. Cutting everybody signals that, that, that that's not what you're doing. Are you trying to get a 2022 quarterback? Is that what this is? You're, you're actually gutting everybody in hopes of actually getting, what are you going <laughs> to, you had the number three overall pick and you got Trubisky. You traded up to get Trubisky. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I don't get it. And, and how would the ownership of the Chicago Bears allow you? Let's say you had the number three overall pick. I'm sorry, you're not picking the next quarterback. I'm letting somebody else do it. So that can't be Pace's strategy. Let's tank the season because he's going to tank his own job. I'm just at, can, can anyone explain it to me? I doubt Bears fans would even try. I don't think they even disagree with anything outside of my assessment of a couple players. Does anybody know what the path is here? Because it kind of seems like the guy just flies by the seat of his pants. Like, he's just making decisions. You know, like, well, we can't let Allen Robinson go. All right, fair. Because, you know, you're trying to keep going here, I guess. Or, or like, man, th- this, this plan will work, but only, like, th- th- there really isn't a plan B. You know what I mean? There, there's no real true plan B here. The plan is we keep Allen Robinson, we get Russell Wilson, and I... How would that even work, by the way? They had to cut their cornerback just to be able to have Andy Dalton come in. The cap hit for Russell Wilson this year is $32 million. It goes up to 37 after that and 40 after that. How the heck are the Bears going to pay for that? They're going to have to cut Khalil Mack. I'm kind of sad, to be completely honest, that they didn't get Russell Wilson. I mean, it would have caused some problems for us, and I don't think it means we lose to the Bears, but it would have been harder to beat the Bears. They might have been able to sneak out a win here and there, but we're talking about a team that 
would have so much money lost on on top of three dra- three first round picks and a, and and I think two players they offered. I'm kind of bummed they didn't get Russ. And the crazy thing is, now that they've signed um, Andy Dalton, they're kind of stuck. They can't just trade him back. So if you're looking at it and saying, well, what if Deshaun Watson comes through? Well, they can't get rid of Andy Dalton, and they can't really save any money with Nick Foles. They could trade Nick Foles, but they save $1 million. If they trade Andy Dalton, they lose $2 million. So that So the $10 million is locked in. And I'm, I'm looking at over the cap, and they still have him at $7.6 million over the cap, which isn't the reality. They've done, they've done some things that, you know, and conveyed them to the, the league that they're under the cap. So somewhere in here, Maybe, it's, maybe it might just be the Kyle Fuller thing, because that would be $11 million. I don't know if that's official or, or what. But anyways, it's just, how? I, I mean, you can get rid of Robert Quinn would save $2 million. I, I just, I don't know, dude. I mean, Akeem Hicks. Akeem Hicks would be the thing. That's $10.5 million. And that's another guy I've talked about. This is, when I talked about the Bears before, these are the guys I talked about. And again, it makes sense if we're tearing down, but if you're going to tear down, you don't tag Allen Robinson. Uh, Khalil Mack is of almost no use to you. Not saying you get rid of him, but if it takes two years, we're talking about a 32-year-old uh, Khalil Mack, and I guess he's still got two years left on his contract. Maybe he can still play. I, I don't know, man. I, 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 just, I just wish I wish I could have somebody explain it to me, and, and, and that's really the best thing I can think. They had an all-in plan, but it was contingent on getting a top quarterback, and they ended up with Dalton, and now they're just floundering. Like, I, I don't know, man. I don't know what to do. Oh, by the way, we're still over the cap. I don't know how we were going to pay for a quarterback, so we got to do something. How about we cut our number one corner? By the way, why don't we cut our number three wide receiver for fun? I, I don't know what the point of it is. Let's just do it. I guess to save more, more money, although Anthony Miller's cap hit is $1.7 million. But okay, Akeem Hicks now wants out, and we're just like, all right, fine, go. I, this is this is as big of a mess as I've seen. This is horrific, and they needed to get rid of Pace. They had to do that. Let somebody else do this. If you're going to gut the team, fine, but at least give your fans and your team some hope to say, listen, this is a mess, and I'm sorry, and I wish we could keep Kyle, and I wish we could keep um, you know, Akeem and these guys, but they're going to go out and they're going to make bank out there in, in the free agent market or, or whatever, the trade market, whatever. This isn't about that. This is about we've still got a core of guys. We've still got Khalil Mack. We've still got Eddie Goldman. We've still got our linebackers. We've still got some core pieces on that offensive line. You know, you, you, you blow a lot of smoke. We got Cole Komet. And we're going we're gonna to rebuild, but we're going to do it the right way. You know, you just come in and you, you talk the nonsense and you give it your best shot at building a football team. The other issue is the Bears are in almost no position to actually get a quarterback unless Mac Jones falls. The problem is Washington is one spot in front of them. But even then, you're getting Mac Jones and what, dude? First of all, you have to assume he's better than Andy Dalton, which I don't think you can assume that. And again, you're putting him in a position where, what are you going to do? You're going to start Mac Jones over Andy Dalton and just flat out lie to Dalton? Oh yeah, you're definitely the starter. By the way, we're going to draft this guy and you're going to sit on the bench. But even if he does start, and even if he is a little bit better, who's he throwing to? Well, maybe he'll start next year. Cool. So what, what about Allen Robinson? He signed a one-year tag. He ain't going to be around next year. The number three wide receiver's gone. No idea why Jimmy Graham is still on this roster. But he is. Uh, my head's spinning, man. My head is spinning. And the Lions aren't, aren't all that much better. At least it's coherent. You just see him kind of tearing down, and it's like, all right, well, now they got to rebuild. And it's just a question of, are they going to rebuild well or not? Are they going to do a good job and get good players or not? And again, the John Dorsey thing makes me nervous because he's got a pretty good track record of drafting well. He had a great reputation here in Green Bay, went over to Kansas City, built that Super Bowl franchise, got fired, went to Cleveland, built that team up to what it is now, which is a playoff, actually an actual playoff team, which is the first time in forever. That was John Dorsey. He gets fired from there. Now the Lions have him, but they got a steep climb. I mean, they, they, they not only have to get their quarterback, they got a lot of work to do. They need a wide receiver. They need to build up the offensive line. They don't really, I mean, I guess they kind of have a running back, but eh. they don't have defensive tackles. They don't have edge rushers. They don't have linebackers. They don't have corners. They don't have safety. They don't have a football team. I mean, right now with the Vikings kind of building back a little bit, it's really just kind of a two-man race. And um, I think that the Packers and the Vikings have got an automatic four wins this season. 
Anyways, I really got to take a break here. We'll come back and we'll talk about some other additional news and notesy stuff that's been going on. We'll try to stick to the NFC North. But again, any and all help that you can provide would be very greatly appreciated. Um, a five-star iTunes review would be lovely. From what I can see, it's the one that has the logo that says Pack Daddy. Apparently, there's one that says Packernet Podcast on iTunes because this whole thing is just broken. It's probably why I'm not ranked very well on iTunes. But uh, if we can continue to make that push and show iTunes that people do like this show and listen to it and whatnot. And again, if you're listening to the one that says Packernet with the shield that's got like the uh, green and gold stripes that has a bunch of different podcasts on it, if you would consider switching, that would be greatly appreciated. Because although I still get those downloads as far as what I can report back to advertisers and whatnot, which is fine, iTunes does not know that people are listening to me and my podcast because you're over there. Just a thought, throwing it out there. Um, if you're able to and are, are a fan of the podcast and want to help financially, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy. You can do it for as little as a dollar a month. It's $10 pays you up for the whole year. And uh, again, as I've said a thousand times, a dollar isn't much to you, but it means a lot to me when you look at the quantity of the people listening to this podcast. It's, it's, it, if everybody gave a dollar, it's life changing for me and my family. So please consider it and uh, help to take that small step toward getting everybody on the dollar a month plan. Otherwise, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple. Just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop, that's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place, and you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. So looking at the Lions, uh, they actually did make a couple moves. They got wide receiver Brashad Perriman, who is a guy that I really liked. Uh, the Jets ended up signing him, didn't have a huge year over there, but he was great with the um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the year prior. Um, I don't expect him to be a real great football player for the Lions, considering it's the Lions and they don't have as good of a quarterback or offensive anything. But he's a decent player. It's a massive downgrade from Galladay, but um, would I have been happy if we got him? Yes, one-year, $3 million deal. Uh, they they got to sign somebody, so they went with Brashad Perriman. Um, I also I, I went through the list of all the things they needed uh, they went out and got Charles Harris, who was an edge rusher. He was spent a year with Atlanta. Prior to that, he was with Miami. Last year, he managed 14 pressures on 173 attempts. So we can see just in a snapshot, he's a sub 10% guy, which he'll fit in real well with the Lions. He, he has a shot to actually start for that team, considering how bad they are. A uh, year prior to that, it was 13 pressures on 231 attempts, which is beyond putrid. Um, and no, he has never gotten a very positive run defense grade. So 6'3", 250, he's kind of a smaller guy that can't get around the edge. That's problematic, obviously. Um, they did sign, as I think I mentioned it, maybe not, I don't know, but I'm sure you know Tim Boyle and uh, Jamal Williams from the Packers. Jamal will probably get a decent amount of playing time. Tim Boyle will probably not, although 
Not that I would ever wish injury on anybody, but it would be kind of cool if, if for whatever reason, Tim Boyle was the starter in Detroit. You know, if for no other reason, then we would just absolutely pick him apart. He'd look like the worst quarterback in history, and all the Tim Boyle truthers on the Packers side will have to eat a little crow. I hate to be that guy, but that always kind of annoyed me. I don't, I don't mind rooting for a guy just to be kind of ironic, you know? But some people are serious about it, and that's like, come on, man. And, that, and, and it's not just Tim Boyle. It's every single time that happens, right? It's, it's Tim Boyle. It's Taysom Hill. It's on and on and on and on and on. There's always a number three quarterback, although Tim Boyle is technically the number two, but he's historically the number three. And let's be completely honest, he was never actually ahead of Jordan Love. He started ahead of Jordan Love, but in terms of priorities, it's not even close. But there's always a number three quarterback that Packers fans get obsessed with. And it's, it, again, it, it's a fun thing to kind of be silly about. And like root for him, like, yeah, I really like that guy. And I did. I like I like Taysom Hill. He was awesome in the preseason. And you can see he does awesome things for New Orleans and whatnot. So it's it's kind of fun. But jeez, just gets exhausting. At least now we can get a new number three to obsess over and talk about how he's better than our number two and all that nonsense. Sorry, is that is that too negative? Well, whatever. Um, the Lions lost kicker Matt Prater, so one of the few actual good players on their team is gone. He had a little bit of a down year, but you know, it's it's one of those things where you're going to, I'm going to make the statement, you guys lost Matt Prater, he's one of the few good players on your team, and Lions fans are going to ch- chime in, acting all smart, talking about, uh, actually, he had a bad year in 2020, uh, actually, he's 37 and he's declining, uh, actually, 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 and then what's going to happen is they're going to go out and find somebody else, he's going to be absolute garbage, and they're going to be begging to get Prater back, because we've seen this play out a thousand times. But okay, you can go ahead and actually me to death, see how that works out for you. Um, cornerback Justin Coleman, who is a very good football player for the Seattle Seahawks. Detroit picked him up, didn't really have any idea how to use him, um, apparently because he wasn't very good. He signed with the Miami Dolphins, so they lost two of their three starting cornerbacks, which leaves them with Jeffrey Okuda, who they drafted, who is supposedly this elite player that was garbage last year. Uh, the Lions also picked up Michael Brockers, who's another Ram. Uh, if you didn't know, the new GM was an ex-Ram guy, so he's picking up Goff, and he also got Brockers. Um, Brockers had 30 pressures on 428 attempts. So that tells you all you need to know about that guy. Um, the year prior, 36 out of 438, 22 out of 446. I mean, he's a horrific pass rusher in terms of run defense. He doesn't, he kind of alternates. He's good sometimes, terrible other times, um, decent 2019, not good in 2018 or 20. It seems like at 30 years old, it's, it's kind of, again, it's like a flickering light. It used to be on more than off. Now it's off more than on. It's, he's clearly declining. But the Rams guy is, this is just goes to show how you're not a good GM. When you go to a new team and you're just adamant that we had so many good guys and we're going to poach some of the other guys, and you get Goff and Michael Brockers, and it's like, dude, you know those guys are trash, right? Like when you're biased in, fl- in favor of the guys that you like because you can't see that you made a mistake, that's not a great sign. But I'll leave that alone. The best thing about Michael Brockers is after the quarterback trade, he was still a Ram. And he came out and decided to make a comment that Matt Stafford is an upgrade over Jared Goff, which honestly is probably the truth. But the hilarious part is he got traded to uh, the Lions. So now he's playing for the Lions, which is now a terrible team, which has to make him very upset. But he also has to be back with his old quarterback that he just trashed. So like the one guy you know in the locker room, you can't really even go up to him and be like, hey, what's up, man? It's so good to see you again. I missed you so much. We're going to be so good together, right? Back in the playoffs, probably probably see those Packers again. We're going to get them this time, right? But, uh, yeah, Marvin Jones is a Jaguar now. He's gone. That was somewhat of an expected move. Um, Danny Shelton is gone. Chase Daniel is gone. Jamal Agnew is gone. He's a Jaguar. Uh, Jesse James, the tight end, was released. Obviously, Galladay is gone. The only guy that they, they brought back was Romeo Aquara. They actually friggin tagged the guy which is hilarious now he had a ton of pressures and and he's kind of he actually reminds me a little bit of um what's his name Hassan Reddick Hassan Reddick is not that great of a football player he's horrific against the run he can't tackle anything but he's kind of a kind of a demon around the edge I mean generating pressures he had 61 pressures on 424 attempts and 10 sacks so he's kind of just putrid in terms of anything other than pass rush but he had a great year as a pass rusher and it's, it's, it's a new thing that's never happened before. He was really bad as a pass rusher for the last four years, but kind of broke up, which is the same as Hassan Reddick. He was garbage since forever. I think they tried him at inside linebacker. They finally kicked him outside, and they tried that, and it seemed to work. So, But it's, it's, it's just, it's, 
they put a tag on Romeo Aquara. I mean, I, I think they came to a, a long-term extension, but dude, you tag Romeo Aquara. I mean, tags are reserved for guys like, you know, I don't know, guys that are really, really good, Allen Robinson and whatnot. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, I, it's, it's fine. I mean, you're not going to tag anybody else. You might as well use it. And you came to a long-term agreement, but which is great. Ended up signing a three-year deal for $39 million. And everybody's saying that's the steal of the century. He took a discount. The guy got 10 sacks. Like, I, I guess. I mean, again, he's played five years and had one good year as a pass rusher and is a terrible run defender. I'm not sure you can massively cash in on that. Just saying. I don't know. But again, you, you guys tagged him, man. It's just it's weird to me. Um, in Minnesota Vikings news, it's uh, officially official, although it was official a while ago. But Kyle Rudolph is a giant. Kyle Rudolph will be gone, gone, and we will not be seeing him much anymore. Um, also, Efedi Adenigbo is signed by the Giants. So the Giants kind of poached a bunch of Packers last year. It seems like they're going with a bunch of, of Vikings this year. But uh, Adenigbo is not not the worst player in the world. He actually played significant amount of snaps last year. He was right at about 10%. He only had four sacks, but, you know, he's, he's somewhat decent, I guess. I mean, it, it's it's not somebody you want to lose. Um, the big signing for the Vikings is Patrick Peterson. They They picked him up, and I think... It's it's a good signing for the Vikings. It really is. I'm I'm not gonna say sit here and say that it's not, but this is I and I haven't seen Vikings fans piping up. Maybe they learned their lesson from Yannick and Gakwe, but that that's kind of what we're talking about here. Let's be completely honest about what this is. First of all, he's 31 years old. He's been with the Arizona Cardinals from 2011 to 2020, and the Cardinals finally decided, you know what, we don't want him anymore. They didn't make that decision strictly because of the cap, but he's actually dominant. That's not the reality. In 2018. He played a thousand snaps. Actually, let, let let's how, how's how do we best do this? I guess we'll do it that way. 2018, he had a grade of 82.5. His coverage grade was an 83.7. In 2019, it dropped to a 68.6, coverage grade of 64.3. So 80, 60. In 2020, it was 55 overall and 53.1. So he was one of the lesser talented corners in all of football last year. I understand his name is Patrick Peterson. And, and in the past, he was a dominant cornerback. But that has nothing to do with what he is today. Nothing whatsoever. Now, again, on a team that has a lot of very, very young cornerbacks that really could use some veteran leadership and a guy that could potentially start him, maybe it was just a little bit of a down year and he has a bit of a bounce back. What he bounces back to, I don't know. But it's, it's not the worst signing in the world, but it's certainly not a fix-all. And again, if I see any Vikings fans popping off about we got this dominant corner Please shut him down instantly because this th- this is nonsense. Again, this is Yannick Ngakwe all over again. He's a guy that's filling a massive hole. He is not an elite talent by any stretch of the imagination. Let's look at his NFL passer rating since 2011. Let me know if you notice anything. 85, 64, 91, 95, 65, 80, 83, 82, 104.6, 100.8. He's only been over 100 as in, in passer rating allowed twice in his career, and it just so happens to be the last two years that he played football. It's interesting, right? In 2020, he allowed five touchdowns, had three picks, and four pass breakups. You never like to see those touchdowns above your, your interceptions and pass breakups. Uh, he allowed 677 yards the year before that, 527 the year before that, 364. So you can see where it's he's given up a lot more yards than he used to. Um, last time he gave up that many touchdowns was in 2014. Last time he gave up that many yards was in 2014. His yards after the catch are through the roof. It's just, you know, he's not the same guy. The other really weird thing, he went from three penalties in 2019 to 12 penalties in 2020. The highest he's ever gotten outside of that was 10 in 2015, but 12 penalties. And you think, well, what is that on? Well, one reason why a cornerback would be heavily penalized is you look at guys like Josh Jackson, who's heavily penalized. Why? Because he gets very grabby. Why does he get grabby? Because he's not very good. If you're worried you're going to lose the guy, you grab him. And when you grab him, they throw the flag. It's a bad sign when there's a spike in penalties right at the time when there's a clear decline in your play. So just so we're clear on that, I'm okay with the signing, but it's I'm not scared of the guy even a little bit. Not even a a tiny bit. I know his name is Patrick Peterson. I know he used to be, back in 2011, a fifth round, fifth overall pick. I know back in 2011, he ran a 4-3-1. None of these things matter in 2021. Um, I don't know. Did I mention they signed? I don't even remember what I talked about. And didn't. They signed Dalvin Tomlinson. Very good signing. I mean, this this is a an actual good football player. Um, and I don't necessarily expect a decline because he's going to a team that's, they know how to utilize defensive talent. Um, 
I mean, there, there could be a decline, but the, the guy's been solid for four straight years. He's just a good football player. Um, and in 2020 was actually the first year he graded out well as a pass rusher. His stats weren't great. 28 pressures, 334 attempts, four sacks, but he graded out well, meaning he's winning his one-on-one. He just wasn't really getting to the quarterback. But on top of that, just his, his run defense has just been stout for four years straight. He's a good football player. At 6'3", 317, he's primarily a, a big run defender, which is kind of strange because they already have one in Michael Pierce, so I guess they're just going for two of them. And then obviously you got uh, Daniil Hunter off the edge. It's kind of strange they're not getting somebody that's a little bit more of a pass rusher on the inside. I mean, I guess Pierce kind of has done that in the past. I just don't think you're going to get much from Tomlinson and Pierce as far as pass rush. But it's going to be hard to run against them, which kind of makes sense when you look at the NF, uh, the NFC North. You've got Matt LaFleur who wants to emphasize that. Obviously, you have to stop the pass if you're going to stop the Packers because that's still going to be the, the most important task. But it's becoming increasingly important to stop the run if you're going to beat the Packers, at least make them one-dimensional. Uh, if you look at the Bears and the Lions, I mean, if you can stop the run, you're good. I mean, there, there's no threat from those teams outside of that. And there's barely a threat of that in, in Detroit. Um, and then the Vikings also released Dan Bailey. Again, maybe I talked about it, but uh, another kicker goes bye-bye. Again, Dan Bailey had a terrible 2020. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where they got Dan Bailey because they were having such a bad time with kickers. And the Vikings curse just went all over Dan Bailey. He's shanking things left and right. Uh, 15 of 22 field goal attempts. So, um, I mean, the, the, you kind of have to move on from him, but Again, it's it's not going to get better. They signed Greg Joseph. I don't even know who that guy is. Looks like his career, he played for Tennessee and Cleveland. In his career, he's 18 of 21, which is 85%. 100% within 20 yards, 100% within 30 yards, um, 5 of 7 from 40 yards out, and uh, 50%, 1 of 2 from 50 plus. So, I mean, it's it's something, I guess, but... Anyways, I mean, it's just, I, th- I think it's, you know, with, with COVID and all that stuff, it's kind of tough for most teams. Most teams are kind of looking at things going, man, this is not as good as I was hoping. And I think for the Packers, just being able to hang on, when you kind of scour the NFL and see what teams are doing, it's not that bad. I mean, they, they again, they were arguably the best team in football last year. I know they didn't win, but I mean, you know, they, they were up there. They were in contention. Very, very good football team. And for the most part, they were able to maintain what they were able to do. Um, they've got some challenges, but again, the, the most important thing for long-term success outside of keeping the cap healthy, which they absolutely need to start doing, which is probably going to mean some tough decisions down the lo- down the road, but um, tough decisions get a lot easier when you draft backups, when you draft guys. And, and that's something to consider in this draft. Look at the players who are becoming unhealthy for the cap. Guys like Zadarius. I, I don't know that edge rusher isn't going to become increasingly important in the draft. Not to say they wouldn't consider extending him, but again, they're they're in a position right now where, yes, we can extend him if he really shows up, but if he doesn't, we need to cut him. And then if we cut him and we don't have Preston, we have Rashawn, who is decent but is yet to really fully break out, right? Consistently be a good football player from week to week. He has flashes. I don't know that that's not important. So, you know, I, I, a lot of consideration. And again, it's one of those things where as the dust settles, we got to kind of reevaluate everything. Um, I'm still having a hard time just picturing what the Bears are today, what the Vikings are today, what the Lions are today. Um, it's going to take some time to kind of reconfigure that. And then obviously after the free agency officially is settled down, I think we're pretty close to being done, but there's still moves that are going to be made. And then obviously the draft is going to reshape some things, but it's a very different landscape these days. But anyways, I got to get going. You folks have yourselves a fantastic Thursday. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.